Hello everyone, it's Jay, and today I wanted to explore something a little different and talk about Sherlock Holmes in the world of Death Note and whether or not he could solve the Kida case. Seeing as though Sherlock Holmes is literally the world's most popular detective, and people go out their way to make actual sarcastic terms when someone says something that they think was smart. There's no better test for the world's greatest detective than to throw him into one of the hardest cat and mouse chase series of all time, Death Note. Sherlock Holmes has solved many impossible cases in his day, but this will be the hardest yet. If you guys do want to see more videos like these, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button as well. It really goes a long way and it lets me know that you guys want to see more content like this. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy. The structure of the video will go something like this. We'll be taking Sherlock Holmes from the novel comics and TV shows versus Light Yagami from his original run in Death Note with a sprinkle of his alternate novel counterpart. With people like Nier, Mello, and the MPA all residing in Japan and Sherlock Holmes completely replacing L, the winning and losing conditions for Sherlock Holmes are as followed. Sherlock Holmes must convict Light of being Kida with substantial evidence. Convicting Light without proper evidence. Killing Light before gaining proper evidence. Or Light Yagami kills himself before Sherlock Holmes can solve the case. As strange as it is, in the world of Death Note, the suspect killing themselves before substantial evidence can be formulated against them is considered a loss by people like L, Mello, and Beyond Birthday. Beyond Birthday being the same person born with Shinigami eyes and started killing people and planned on killing himself in the end, just to give a case that L couldn't solve past speculation. Sherlock Holmes in his own right may find this also to be a loss, considering that he takes his job extremely seriously and isn't satisfied until every case that he is in is objectively closed. Light would need to write down the name Sherlock Holmes in a death note for his victory, with the real face of Sherlock Holmes in mind for it to work. Which Sherlock Holmes is a master of disguise and that could spell trouble for Light, since in the original series of Death Note, he was never actually met with someone who was deliberately changing their identity. In some material for Sherlock Holmes, for instance the BBC Sherlock series, Sherlock mentions that his full name is William Sherlock Scott Holmes. However, for simplicity's sake and to stay true to the original story of Sherlock Holmes, which there is no mention of William Sherlock Scott Holmes in the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle original series, we'll stick with regular Sherlock Holmes. Since Sherlock lives in England and Light in Japan, the name of Sherlock Holmes isn't known to Light, or all the world for that matter, apart from Watson, but it is known as Basil, which is one of Sherlock's many aliases across his novels. With the setup out the way, let's begin. To start, Death Note plays out as usual. The Death Note falls from the sky, Light retrieves it, killing criminals like the Shinjuku killer and Shibu Maru is normal. Seeing as though this is what breaks Light, I wanted to talk more about the philosophy behind Light and Death Note as a whole, and that being, is murder wrong if it's for the betterment of the world? Basically, intent is where the answer lies. In Light's scenario, the answer lies within searching to obtain world peace. With world peace and crimes abolished, not only would the human race flourish, but seeing as though Light takes his so-called justice to the level of littering, this ultimately can help the environmental problems that are mostly solved pollution-wise. And there are many more problems around the world that can be solved indirectly when people don't have to worry about corruption by power-hungry people stabbing them in the back. Since Light's aim is to abolish evil in the world, is there any more noble or honorable cause for murder? To trade his future of any honest life, and basically a payment for self-sacrifice, morally to bear the weight of all the evil in the world, and corruption and make it so that only he has blood on his hands. He traded his soul for the destruction of evil. His aim was to eliminate all corruption in the world, and then become a symbol to keep it out. I don't think there's a better choice of term than God for what light was. By definition, a God is a superhuman being or spirit worshipped as having power over nature and human fortunes. A deity. You can find no better definition for what Kida is. Kida who controls all crime in the world, shifting what reality is and using a power only he has. The fact that he uses the term God to describe what he's going to become is basically showing that he knows and realizes what he's actually going to have the power to do. The power to change human environment and society. He believes that the world had to be fixed and that only he alone could accomplish this. Light was ultimately written this way by Obita, 
with the intent for the detectives to actually have something to catch on to and to be acknowledged by the world as Kira. With more and more killings happening around the world, the police are in shambles trying to figure out what is happening, proving nothing past coincidence. This is the part of the story where they would ask L to join the case. However, in this hypothetical, the super detective L is replaced with what many would proclaim as fiction's greatest detective, Sherlock Holmes. To find how Sherlock would go about convicting Light differently than L, we need to see how he works in comparison to him. L is credited as the world's greatest detective in the world of Death Note. He is directly compared to five ordinary investigative bureaus and seven intelligence agencies put together. With his skills of interpersonal intelligence was the ability to understand oneself and their own emotions, which we see a lot of the times when things look like they're heading for the worse. He never seems to be bothered by anything. He always has the same expression the entire time. His skills of interpersonal intelligence mixed with his abstract and logical thinking have led him to mending many impossible cases, all on his own. Sherlock is imbued with an almost impossibly encyclopedic level of general knowledge, and the most magical ability to always deduce the correct interpretation of every clue or every bit of evidence, since generally every single clue is open to multiple interpretations. Throughout the 200 movies he's had, the novels, the TV shows, and even the comics, Sherlock Holmes has always solved every case he's taken, including Jack the Ripper, which is regarded as one of the hardest cases in human history. He has the remarkable ability to observe unusual details that high-ranking police detectives and even multiple intelligence agencies never even noticed. He has a high sense of sight, hearing, smell, taste, which are pre-naturally sharp. Like L, he almost never second-guesses his hunches or doubts his intuition, but unlike L, he acts upon them with speed and accuracy, which ultimately startles the suspect, not allowing them to have time to cover up their tracks which could benefit him in finding Light since Light usually takes advantage of L's inability to act on his instincts which ultimately allows Light to formulate his escapes out of situation. With knowledge in every field like literature, philosophy, astronomy, astrology, and geology just to name a few, any deduction that L could make, Sherlock could also come to the same conclusion. Sherlock would go to Japan as fast as he could after gaining the information on where the first irrational death by heart attack happened. Especially since the first death was only broadcasted on Japanese media, using the investigators in Japan to help him see the patterns of the killings, which would include the time of day, leading him to believe that Kira is most likely a student. And one pattern that even L missed that Sherlock would notice is the type of criminals actually being killed. All criminals being killed had their name and face publicly broadcast. Criminals who weren't publicly broadcast on the news or any media were actually left alive, which could easily be deduced that Kira must have the person's name and face in order to kill them. A disadvantage for Sherlock is it's not incredibly hard to find his real name. Light would deduce that he originally came from London, which, if not public, he would obtain through the classified police information. Light would most likely deduce that there's a few potential suspects within London that could include Sherlock. Sherlock's brother Mycroft would be higher on Light's suspect list, since it's literally stated that his deductive abilities surpass even Sherlock himself. But ultimately, Sherlock is a master of disguise and can create a situation to keep his identity hidden, if not have already implemented a plan to get any record of Sherlock Holmes in England and replacing it with Basil. However, Light would start killing suspects in England if they gave a single hint of being Basil. So Sherlock would need to have measures in place just in case because Light does not care who dies in order to get Sherlock's real name. However, the question would arise, would Light even search for Sherlock's real name in the first place? The whole reason that Light went through all the trouble in Death Note to find L's name was because L publicly rubbed his name all across the air, officially challenging Light to the cat and mouse intellectual battle, or as Nier calls it, the battle of pride. Sherlock, on the other hand, wouldn't make himself known to the public if he didn't absolutely need to and would actually have stayed relatively quiet in his investigation in Japan. Meaning to light, Basil would just be another regular agent on the case according to the police files and wouldn't have any reason to investigate him further. In the original series, L used Lindale Taylor as a ploy to prove that Kira is real and all the deaths are not a coincidence. This is part of L's character. He will sacrifice anyone to close a case. In Death Know How to Read, we see a section that explains L's true character saying, quote, 
As El himself acknowledges, he has a very childish personality and hates to lose, no matter how small the contest. Very suspicious by nature, he'll use any method he can to track down the truth until he's completely satisfied with the answer. As such, he's often misunderstood. El using others as bait to lure out the suspect isn't out of his character. So would Sherlock do anything like this? Yes, he would, but it'd be boring to do it the same way El did. So another way that Sherlock could see that Light is Kidda is by using the information that was originally given about Kidda being potentially a student. Light would obviously change the pattern of which he kills to make it seem less likely that he's a student. Holmes would catch on to this change, especially since Light changed the pattern the very next day after Sherlock and the Japanese police recorded that fact. Like L, he would deduce that there's a leak in the police force knowing that Kida has access to classified information. Unlike L, Holmes can conduct a personal examination of everyone who knows of the Kida case. In many of his original novels, he was able to tell a person's entire life from one inspection. For example, in the novel Valley of Fear and the Hounds of Baskervilles. Clearing everyone on this case would be a loss for light, seeing as though with L, the Japanese police had no way of confirming that everyone on the case is clean of leaks building distrust between L and the MPA, allowing them to investigate each other and record it where Light can see and he can wait for them to take down each other. L is drawn with a genuine sweat mark in the manga. This is the first time that we see this out of L, and it happens in this very moment to show just how embarrassed he was in this scene. Sherlock would already know that everyone working on the case is genuinely not Kida or helping him in any way. He could look deeper into the information about him being a student and would deduce that Kida must be an intellectual student to coordinate and formulate plans without being caught, leading to a list of only a few suspects. The children of Whammy's house, high-ranking students in the Kanto region of Japan, and Light Yagami himself. With Light Yagami, Sayako Yagami, and the daughter of the detective and the children of Whammy's house being the best option, since he already knows they must have connections to the police. After going through Whammy's house and inspecting people like Nier, Mello, and the children, he can come to the logical conclusion that they are not Kida. Seeing as though Sherlock Holmes sees the environment different than all of us, through just looking at the environment of which the children reside, Sherlock can deduce facts about them and their entire lives. He could find and learn almost anything about them using simple, almost naive questions, and based upon their answer, can know if they are Kida. With a single glance, he can tell them their entire lifestyle, personality, and even intentions. This is shown through Sherlock's first encounter with Watson or even a random couple he sees in a coffee shop. He explains their entire lives, their friends, their families, their emotions, and every single thing about them with a single glance. With the children of Whammy's house cleared, he can move on to the detective's daughter and the Yagami household. In disguise, Sherlock could go to light directly and analyze him, and then he would go to his house and use the detective skills there to find out more information about him. He would most likely catch light coming out of school and would approach him directly. Like I've been preaching this entire video on multiple occasions, upon meeting him he can tell everything about him. He would be able to tell that he is Kida from a simple conversation. However, I do believe it's possible that Light could outsmart Sherlock here, because Light is very good at interpersonal intelligence with the ability to understand emotions, motives, and feelings of others, and can use this to counter-analyze Sherlock. Now, I do think Light could learn a lot about Sherlock in their first encounter, however, Sherlock would know a lot more, including that he is Kira. With Sherlock's psychopathic persona, he can be sociable when he needs to acting like a friend in situations that deem it necessary, similar to Light. Although I think Light is better at this, Sherlock would be deducing the physical displacement and actually can tell intent better than even Light can. L set up cameras in each room and watched multiple monitors at the same time, and he couldn't even spot anything going on with Light, even though he's a master of psychology and can see changes in demeanor and tell intent. Light may be suspicious of Sherlock here, but Sherlock got what he needed. He knows that Light is Kida. Sherlock Holmes would probably arrive at the Yagami household before anyone else comes home and inspect his place with himself alone and Watson. Upon entering the house, he could tell if there's any traps or rigs. This is shown a lot through the novel and series. For instance, when he could tell and prove that the painting was fake in 10 seconds after the painting was subjected to every test in science and was proclaimed a genuine piece. 
He could see that the single star on the painting wasn't discovered at the time of the original painting. Knowing that the star was forged, he could deduce it was fake and all under 10 seconds. He was able to produce an entire 13 space password that had been set into place by the Ministry of Defense. He could tell that it's an airline seat allocation number before even Irene, who's literally 6 inches from his face, can kiss him and Watson could put down his mug of coffee. Not only that, but he deduces the flight the departure time and the destination all within two seconds if sherlock does go to his room he'll be able to instantly tell if there's any traps on the door or anything he will see the paper and pencil lead in his door and could easily bypass it upon entering his room he will know where the death note is by opening up the drawer, he will be able to see that there is a false bottom with a trap. He can tell where someone's hiding something by as simple as how the pen on his desk is placed. He will be able to retrieve the notebook with no difficulty, even if Light had placed the trap. Upon reading the context of the death note, he would already be able to know how it works and why he's doing it. Once again, he can deduce facts about someone just by looking at them and their environment of which they reside. Sherlock Holmes wouldn't be impressed that death gods are real, since in his many novels he's been against zombies, ghost spirits all the time. For example, Ghost of the Past and Berlagellant Ghost. Light would be finished at this point seeing as though they have enough evidence to convict him of being Kira. Even if Light tries to manipulate those around him to believe that the notebook isn't what it truly is, Sherlock can tell if he's lying. And that's pretty much wraps for Light and the end of Kira. Questions that I can already see coming is, what would happen if Sherlock came after Elle's death? This would be much harder for Sherlock because now we're dealing with a more experienced Light who has access to Misa and Mikami, two people willing to gain the Shinigami eyes and can kill anyone they want to with a single glance, including Sherlock himself. And since Sherlock's main detective skills come from actual observation and interacting with people face to face, this could spell trouble. However, Sherlock would have much, much more knowledge of what he's actually facing, since the MPA would already inform Sherlock of everything L had deduced, including Light being the prime suspect of Kira, and Misa Amane being the second Kira. And they would tell him that the first Kira could only kill by seeing your name and face, but the second one, the second one can kill just by seeing your face. He would also know of the Death Note, how it works, and even Ryuk would be present. I think that would be interesting to see an interaction between Ryuk and Sherlock Holmes, seeing as though Sherlock Holmes can make his own deduction about Ryuk and tell if he's lying about anything, which will come in handy later, especially since Ryuk wants to lie about fake rules. I don't believe Sherlock would want to work directly with Light like L did, but start his own investigation and only keep tabs on what Light and the MPA are doing, similar to Nier. Sherlock would still be under the alias of Basil, seeing as though he was informed of Kira's way of killing. To go about convicting him from here, he needs to know why Light and Misa were let go. Especially Misa, since she was objectively the second Kira and was eventually cleared. The MPA would inform him that they were let go because of the killings continued even after Light and Misa were incarcerated. And a 13-day rule states that the person with the death note must write down at least one name within 13 days or they will die. With Light and Misa being imprisoned for over 50 days and the killings continued, they were let go under L's orders after a final test by Chief Yagami. Sherlock would find this quite interesting and would inspect the death note and find that the 13-day rule looks like the one that does not belong. In the original show of Death Note, the way they proved that the rule was fake was from Mello. In questioning the Shinigami Saito, he told them that the rule was fake. L did have suspicion that the rule was fake. It was going to test it. However, he was killed by Rem before he could do so. Just like the fake painting he solved in under 10 seconds, he would be able to tell that the rule is fake from the death note. There would be no reason to test it. He would ask Ryuk about it and Ryuk would tell that they are all real. In analyzing him, Sherlock would know that he was lying and would explain his reasoning to the MPA. Light would probably be informed of his progress and would start making Misa get the Shinigami eyes to kill Sherlock Holmes. Light would make a valid excuse to come meet 
but I believe there's too much evidence against this young man to actually meet him in person. Because there's evidence that he's actually creating a fake rule, they could conclude that Light is Kira, which could actually make this a quicker win for Sherlock than the original hypothetical. However, the circumstances need to be just like this in order for Light to lose. Because if the circumstances are any different, Light will win. Because who knows what Light had planned months in advance. Elle and Sherlock aren't the only one who can make traps. Even though I do believe Elle is a better detective than Sherlock, I believe Sherlock would actually make better decisions than Elle would in this case specifically and can solve it faster. Elle was actually having fun with this case, dragging it on. There are multiple examples in the show where it shows Light knowing something that only Kida would know. For example, Light deduced that there were only three cards and didn't even suspect a fourth, even though the numbers on the back of the cards basically scream that there's a fourth card. However, Light wrote each note, meaning he only believed there was three. And since it wasn't public knowledge, meaning that he knows something only Kida would know. Another example is when Light proclaims that it makes sense that he's a suspect of being Kida, since Ray Pember died investigating him. But how does Light know that? In fact, Light himself wanted no one to know that he met Ray Pember. And since Ray Pember was the only one investigating Light for months, and that information was told to no one, this means that Light is the one who killed him and is Kira. Sherlock, I do believe, has better general knowledge than L. However, I believe that L is the better detective due to his intuition. It's literally the best intuition I've ever seen. L knew that Light was Kira, he just needed the evidence for it. Which he did have some, but he wanted to have a little fun with him first. Pause. But overall, could the greatest detective in the world, Sherlock Holmes, solve the Kira case? The answer is yes. I mean, what did you expect? Sherlock Holmes is the same person who shocked Batman with his presence, and even Batman himself has asked for his help on a case, and uh, we know how OP Batman is. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video, please press the subscribe button and hit the like button as well, and uh, let me know if you guys want to see more content with Death Note. Well, I appreciate each and every one of you, I really do. Until next time, see ya.